testing, one, two, three, four, testing. All right, today we're going to begin by get, causing an LED to blink. This is the equivalent of the hello world of embedded computing. All right, also known as physical computing. So what's going to be our embedded computer? Well, it's going to be an Arduino. So we're going to talk about what an Arduino is, what we can do with it, and how we can control it. Um, <coughs> here's a series of different Arduinos. The blue one is the classic Arduino Uno. The big red one, the red board, is part of, put out by SparkFun. It's a really great one. All right. And Intel Galileo, Galileo is a version of an Arduino. And then you have... Uh, Arduino Mini, and they range from quite quite large to very, very tiny. Then, what I mean by quite large is a footprint of, say, 6 to 4 inches. So, so I guess, relative about how large something is. But it was still larger, and but then they get quite smaller size of your thumb. You use Arduinos in 3D printings and in quadcopters, are just examples of some of the microcontrollers that you're out there. But they're going everywhere. If you're talking about anything being hooked up to the internet and controlling it, robotics, all those things, use some kind of microcontrollers. An open source microcontroller is Arduino, and that's what we're using. All right. So we, we just mentioned with Arduino is. Let's go through some electronics here. Arduino ha hardware that's going to come with uh, your Spark Fun kit. We have jumper wires, LEDs, photoresistors, piezo elements. You know, resistors of different kinds, temperature, etc. Please, uh, there's your red board. There's your breadboard. Flex sensors, which is really cool. Soft potentiometer. You're going to play with that. Servos, relays, integrated circuits, and LCD. Very important. Some of these materials are hazardous to swallow. Do not leave this out with a little munchkin can get to it. Don't leave it out where it can drop on the floor on a carpet. You're never going to find the parts again. So... Here's our power jack that goes into our red board. Here's our USB board, little uh, power that comes from our computer. Or we talk to it on the computer. Power pins. This is we bring power into our, um, put power in and get power out of our Arduino. So whether it be a red board or the classic Uno, there's where the pins are. And for this class, for all practical purpose, uh, purposes in this class, there are Arduino, Uno, and a red board, or we're going to start being used interchangeably. I'm going to hear it interchangeably. All right, so right over here you have 3.3 volts, 5 volts coming out of this Arduino. You have a ground and a ground, and then you have voltage in. That's what VN is, okay? So if you want to add power in. So we can plug a 9 volts into this jack. They say up to 12 to 15. I would really keep it at 9. This says 7 to 15 volts. I would... You know, let's just keep it at nine for what we're doing, okay? And that would go for something over here as well. Just keep it, be very careful about what you're plugging in there. Just for right now, this class, just plug it through this way, okay? Then we have analog pins, analog as opposed to digital pins. These are the pins that we connect with our jumper wires to our breadboard and to our electronics. Analog is a range, think of temperature, digital is either on or off. A light bulb, uh, death. You're either dead or you're not. Right, those are digital, okay? But this is analog. Temperature is a perfect example of that. Or shades of gray could be all analog. Over here on this side are digital pins, and they're very much on or off. We'll get into much greater detail down the road. Up here is the reset button. Always a good thing when you run your program, you got to reset it. Here is the the LEDs. One of our goals is for you to be able to learn to troubleshoot your own hardware and software. We're trying always to work ourselves out of a job that you learn enough that you can go on and then hopefully you can contribute and share with others. And one thing you're going to look for is when you plug this in, there's certain lights we want to see. So if it's, we want to make sure the Arduino is transmitting, we look to see if that little LED light blinks. If it's receiving, it blinks, especially too when you upload and download a program. Then you have pin 13, it's our LED. It's a great way to test our board when we don't have an LED or anything to plug in. We can look at that LED when we write some code and check it out. And then you have an on and off switch. So the first thing I would do plugged in is, hey, do I have an on and off switch? 
is that light, that on, come on, to tell me that this, this breadboard is getting power. Once I have power, is it receiving? So we will get plenty of practice on troubleshooting. So let's just review some of these things real quickly. What is eight? Analog pins. What is four, five, and six? Transmitting, receiving, pin 13. There you go. That's an LED on pin 13. All right. Then we have um, reset button up at three. We have power on for your LED. Or just some of the things that we've covered on this. Let's review some electronics. There's a breadboard. A breadboard, if you peel it back, you would find metal all on, underneath the breadboard. That's what these are, these little metal clips. If I turned them on their side, they would look like this. The LED goes in there, and it's connected inside the breadboard. This causes, these are called horizontal buses, see, lettered A, B, C, D, E, and F, and then these are the vertical buses going up and down. And the buses, all the pins are connected to each other. So from conductivity, anything connected here is connected all the way down here on this vertical bus. Anything on this one, on the blue, is connected all the way down to the blue. It's not connected over there. It's just this up and down in the vertical. Horizontal bus is just as you would imagine. It's horizontally. It's connected on 1A. It's then connected all the way to 1E. Notice it doesn't go to F, G, or H. That's a separate. So this is separated from that. Okay? Now, um, this is a diagram out of 1, 2, 3D circuits that we're using. And what we're trying to do is I would like to show you a moment of how not to place, um, a, <coughs> excuse me, how not to place a component, how to place it, and then how we put it all together in a circuit. If you are running in the vertical along this axis, you do not put your resistors this way. You do not put your LED this way. You turn it, you go across in this direction, say here and here. Let me explain why. This is a bus connected all the way up through here. So if you connect on one resistor, at one arm here and the other arm there, or a leg I should say, you would, the current is not going to have to go through the resistor. It can go right under the resistor under the bus. And the current is always going to the place of lowest resistance. So same thing, if you go in the horizontal, this part of the horizontal bus is connected to this part of the horizontal bus. The electricity can flow through here without even needing to go through the resistor. So it won't because the resistor has high resistance. Same thing with LEDs. Now here's the correct way to hit it. When you're on the horizontal bus, make sure your resistor and your components are going vertically. When you're on the vertical bus, make sure they're going horizontally. So this LED is going from the, uh, the blue ground to the red hot right there. In this case, the LEDs are going across two rows here, 24 and 25. This resistor is going from 26 to, say, 22. So if the current comes up, it can't, the current that's here, this row can only get to this row by going through the resistor, which it will. Because while the resistor has resistance, the current still would like to travel. It still will conduct the current. Whereas air or physical separation is not going to be able to. So for example, so here's what a circuit would look like. We're coming off the ground to the same column, or excuse me, row as a resistor. From the resistor, we're going into the, le the cathode leg of the LED, then back out the anode leg of the LED to power, which ends up on the same row going back to this power line there. So electricity flows from this ground line into the resistor, resistor into the LED, LED back. All right, I just mentioned anode and cathode. Anode is the positive leg of the LED, cathode is the negative. This is how a wiring diagram works. And frankly, at first, wiring drives, diagrams are a little intimidating, but after a while, you'll get to know them. Okay? So here we are, the red board, LED, and there's our resistor. It's orange, orange, brown. Make sure you pick that up. And this is 330 ohms. 
And so here's a simple circuit, just using a battery, going from the positive of the battery, positive or long leg of the LED, down to this negative leg of the LED, back to the resistor. The resistor does not have any polarity. It doesn't matter to the resistor. To diodes, they do. You have to put the positive, the positive, negative, and negative. You have regular diodes, and you have light-emitting diodes. And when it has a light, it's light-emitting. And here's another example over to your left. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to begin to use 123 Circuit Simulator. That's 123 Circuit Simulator. And if you haven't already, I need you to go ahead and sign up for this. Um, it's a great way for us to simulate circuits, for us to learn things and practice. And then we'll put them in the breadboard. It, you know, you can do a great simulation, but still, there's something about seeing pretty LED lights come on. Do not, you don't need to be the paying version or pro version. Just use the student version. Okay, and what we're going to focus on as the breadboard circuits, we're not really uh, worried about something called circuit scribe right now. And the schematic here, this PCB, what's cool is what we design here on a breadboard, they can make a schematic, and then we can make a PCB board, actually can print it off, and they will send it back to you so you can order it. So we can design a board, test it, send it off, and it'll come back to us and we'll physically build it. All right, so how do we use it? Well, there's a couple components. There's a code editor, component editor, and a button to start the simulation. Let's click on components. Is the, where we are right now. It's the blue right there. Here's our breadboard. If we click on said breadboard, it'll look like this. It'll have a black line. Now, if we use these shortcut keys, and I'll put the screen up here for a few minutes so you can see this, this will allow us to, to uh, move or select or deselect things. I think it's um, interesting they call it keyboard shortcuts, but it's really the only way you're going to get to some of these functions. Not, there's not a lot. You're going to use the rotate one and zoom and scrolling in. Okay. And obviously you can delete. So if we click on it, it gets that funny look to it. Remember, it started off this way, but it'll immediately go to like black. So I'm hitting R here and I get it turned on horizontally. And then I'm going to add drop in an Arduino. There is not a red board on circuit one, two, three as of now. This may change. So it just used the Arduino and it gets equivalent. All right, let's blow it up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to start off by dragging a wire from the ground over to the rail. Now it's red looking. We don't want that. So we're going to end up clicking on it, which is going to change it a little bit off red to black right up here. Then we're going to take the hot line from, three point, from 5 volts into this red rail, vertical rail here. So once you have power there, think to yourself, are this rail connected? Is this, can I access ground from all these? And the answer is yes. This rail has got power all the way down. This is the ground all the way down. We can connect it. So let's round another wire. Again, it'll start off red. You'll need to change it to black by right clicking on it and selecting black. Put it there. We'll add a resistor. As you can see it right here, it'll be the wrong value. So we'll need to change that. We're going to make it a 330, and it's going to be ohms, not at the 100,000 ohms. It's going to be ohms, so there won't be K when we're finished there. We take the hot over from 3.3 uh, from 3 .3 over to here. All right. We're going to drop in, well, which was already there, excuse me. We're going to drop in an L resistor here, uh, LED here. So we had that hot there. Now we're going to add the LED there. Notice it's on the same row there, which we just said does not work. So we're going to select it, and then we're going to hit the R key to rotate it through. So it's turned all the way around. So here it is. By the way, we can now change the LED to yellow. If you click over here and name of the yellow, just make it a yellow. That's what we have with our SparkFun kit, so we want to use that. And then you're going to connect from up here over to this hot rail. If you look at your LED quickly, you're going to see that this says cathode, this says anode. Cathode is negative, that's where we want to come from, and anode. Now, we can build this. If you notice, if we power that and we go to do that, 
and you can see it actually even looks you can see it it's hot this lights on here for the motor and this is hot here you got that yellow light um, go ahead and build this with your spark fun kit go ahead and build this with your spark fun kit To do that, let's go ahead. We need to make sure we have an Arduino with our breadboard cable plugged over to our computer. Here's a list of the parts, LEDs, 330 resistor, some wires, leads, and resistors are going to be bent to 90. You're coming off the ground there, you're connecting over to here. Let me show you. So this is the LED. Make sure the positive legs on top, negative legs on the bottom. You can also look at this flat edge. And a resistor we're using 13, and jump wires that take us all over the place. And if you're, um, all right. And again, here's the different parts. Here's the ground, maybe make the ground red, your pin 13. It explains what they're doing. All right. Now, once you have, you built this, so you got that to work. Now, we're building this LED. And all we've really done is gone from the pin 13 over. Before, we were going by 5 volts. It automatically went on. All right? And again, if you follow this pin 13 up to the anode of the LED, down to cathode, same row as the resistor, same row as the black line back over. So we didn't bother running lines to the bus. We ran them directly to it. If you go to, um, if we can go up to our choices up here, you're going to see code editor. Go ahead. You can click on that. There it is. So first of all, it'll up, run, upload and run, and this will flash. Okay? But what's really exciting is we can start to change this code right here. So we'll get into what each part of the codes can do. But one thing you can do right off the bat, if you would like to blink it some more, change this delay from 1,000 to 500, delay 500 here. And watch when you run the simulation if the LED flashes any quicker. And I'll do that when you upload and run it. All right, let's talk about the software. You need to get the Arduino software to work with the Arduino. As so we go ready to go on to, we're going with the real part. It looks something like this. After you've downloaded and installed it, you go to File. You go under Open. It has all these different programs you can use. Um, you can go right into Sketchbook. You can go into Edit. We copy and paste things you would expect in Edit. We verify and compile, which is also Command R. We can add. We can import. There's things we're really not going to do in this class. I would say we're going to use the board and serial port and serial monitor throughout this more than anything. But we're using Arduino Uno equivalent. Then serial port, make sure um, that it'll be COM3 or COM4 for your PC users. For your Mac users, it's going to be USB. It's running on a different operating system, a little bit of blanks there. All right, programmers, if you want to write code to your microcontroller not involved in Arduino, we're not going to do that in this class. So if I wanted to open a program, I could go under Examples, Basic, Blink. In fact, why don't you go ahead and do that? And it's going to show up like this. Void Setup, Pin Mode 13, Void Loop. All right. We're going to do the same thing, 
Save it now as a new name. Except we want you to make, say blink your name. So that way, your first name. So that way you can change this. And if you really mess it up, no worries. We just go back and we open blink. So make sure you do that. Go under file, save as, and do it. So let's look at the programming side of this. If you, well, let's break the code down. That's on this screen. We're going to blow it up so we can take a closer look. Under void setup and void loop. My blink turns on the LED for one second, and then off for one second repeatedly. This is a, so this is a comment, slash, star, star, slash. Allows us to write anything in there. Comments are good for you as a programmer. You'd be amazed how much you'll forget if you look away for a little bit with this. Anything between these two symbols, star dot and slash star, and will be ignored by the compiler. These symbols allow for comments in our code notes that don't affect the code's output. Helps you as a programmer. Integer, whole number. So LED pin equals 13. LED pin is going to be a variable, and you're going to assign the value of 13 to it. Make sure we generally break our naming of variables. If we're going to combine words, the first word is not capitalized. The second word is, and we keep working our way through it. All right. The number 13 is the pin on our Arduino. We're going to use that. And you put semicolons after every line of code. That's just a requirement of the language. Void setup. Void is just a function that doesn't return any value, just nothing. Setup is where we go. Remember, a computer is an inherently dumb, dumb piece of equipment because it will do exactly what you tell it, not what you intend. Here we intend the LED pin to be an output to be a bright light. It won't automatically assume it's a bright light. You have to tell it, hey, I want this to be an output. So you've used this function. A function is just a little bit of code we can reuse. Pin mode, parentheses, LED pin, comma, output, all caps, parentheses. Void setup, like I say, is the function that we do it. This is where we set up the LED pin. This container on the left, this container on the right, I call them. Notice there's no semicolon. It holds everything in the void set setup. Like I said, setup is a function which starts when the program is run, initializes variables, sets the pins, and starts using the library. Because remember, the pins can be output pins or input pins. Curly brackets identify or indicate when you're part of a group. What is pin mode? Pin mode allows us to see what we're in. All right, so we're setting it up as an output. So right here we're saying pin 13 is going to be an output. It could be an input. You could hook a sensor and it would go into it. Output sends things out, like LEDs, like motors, are all outputs. So there's a pin mode, and we set that. The output tells the Arduino to send a signal out, the current out. Don't forget the semicolon. After the void setups, there's not, but right here and right here. But because you miss the semicolon, sometimes you'll get the error message. And it doesn't tell you where. One of the first things to look for is did you put semicolons wherever you're supposed to. Okay. This is your code so far, my blink. We've commented it out up here. We've taken a variable LED pin, assigned 13 to it. We've got a void setup. We say, hey, pin model, that's a mode, that's a function telling if it's input or output. I want LED pin, I want 13, what well, we said LED pin is equivalent of 13, so I can write that in there, and then I have my output. And there we go, there's, um, again, we have a void loop is next, that's where everything's going. The void loop doesn't return a value, it's just part of the function. Loop, think of repeat, like in Scratch, a forever repeat. Now, what this happens in the void loop is the guts of our program. It says digital right LED pin. Remember, that's pin 13 high. Set the LED on. Delay 1,000, which is wait a second. It's 1,000 in a second. Digital right LED pin low. Sets the LED off. LED 1,000 waits for a second. 
All right. And that's going to run infinitely until this program's over. All right. Okay, then, um, so that void means you don't get anything. So this is our code for it so far. Void setup, void blink. And then we have, um, don't forget the semicolons. So you have pin void, LED pin, output. All right, now, this digital pin right in the void loop, like I said, where everything happens, the LED pin is goes to high, set the LED on, delay one second, wait for a second, digital right LED pin low, set the LED off, delay a second, because there's 1,000 milliseconds in a second. The function was a delegate right. Notice that how it's digital and capital W there is LED pin. That was our pin 13. If we set it to 12, it would be pin 12. That's why we use a the variable. There's high. That's the same thing as on. You could say true or false. That's saying, hey, give me full blast current or signal. You have LED pin low. That makes it, turns it off. Delay a second before it, after it does that. So your final product should look something like this. Uh, integer LED pin 13, void setup, void loop, LED pin high, delay 1,000, digital right LED pin low, delay a second. You can hit that blue line to compile it, then you hit the yellow, white arrow to upload it. Don't worry. Um, if you get some errors the first time you do it, go back and look at your code. It is very common. You know, it's very easy to say, hey, did you put a semi? After the void loops, the containers here and here, there's no semicolons there, but there are here, 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 here. It's easy to miss. Are you plugged in the pin 13? It's easy to go to pin to the ground or pin 12 by accident. Is your Arduino on? You know, the steps are first. Are your Arduino on if it is? Are there lights where they're supposed to be? You see on the on light, is it on? And then check your code. And if your code's all working, go back and check your hardware. All right, you can try that. You can make uh, sign your name in Morse code. Make the lights go out linearly, faster or slower, linearly, faster, slower, exponentially faster or slower. So there's all kinds of things you can do to this with us. Just a single LED. The next time we, uh, the next lesson, we'll talk about multiple multiple LEDs and looping.